In this video, we'd like to discuss why we need a redriver or a retimer in a service. From the last why low loss channel in a service image, you should know the low loss will improve the PPA images. Therefore, that's the hint image for the purpose of the redriver or retimer. Before diving to the redriver or retimer, let's take a look at a practical usage in the specifications of the Universal Series Bus 4 USB 4 standard. It's my honor and pleasure to participate in the USB I community and define the specification with all the talented people in the industry from 2018 to 2020. You should be able to find the USB 4 early release version in August 2019 through the website or other websites easily. Long story short, to enhance the PPA performance of the links up to 20 gigabit per second per LAN, over 40 gigabit per second links over two lens configuration, the USB I've adopted our suggestion to add the retimer into the specification. Most technical contributors during the meeting agree that the 20 gigabit per second signal is much sensitive to the ISI, refraction, random jitter, determined jitter, interpret skew, etc. in the interface. In addition, the intrinsic circuit impairments like the error mismatch, termination mismatch, thermal noise, and power supply noise, etc. would limit the link robust operation. To meet the performance, a lot of extra power overhead is a must, and most contributors still want to maintain the low-cost system solutions to meet consumer demand. So we need to reduce the power without adding the cost on the channel. What can we do? Correct. As you can see, the channel loss is proportional to the channel length. To reduce the channel loss without changing the channel material over increasing the cost, we must reduce the channel length at the same data rate. Is that feasible or doable in the ecosystem? Of course not. That would limit the end product's usage and make this specification less useful. Instead of doing that, what can we do? Assuming that both channel length and material are fixed or the same? In this example, the total channel loss is 35 dB at the next ray. Bingo! We can still keep both the total channel length and material the same, but breaking the long channel length or loss into two segments. For example, the total channel loss is 35 dB at the next ray, but we could break the channel into two segments, such that each breaking channel would have roughly 17 dB over 18 dB channel loss, such that the CTOE with the TXFFE might be good enough to get less 3 picojr per bit, while the very complicated circuit images of having CTOE plus TXFE plus DFE plus correction blocks to require at least 7 picojr per bit and could be much higher than the worst case corner condition. Breaking into two segments looks promising, but how to implement it? Think about a repeater images for 5 seconds. Yes, all you need is to insert a repeater to recover the signal integrity from the previous segment 70 dB loss 
and we send out to the next segment with a bigger swing to drive another 17 dB loss. Therefore, we may call the repeater function a redriver, which is a very low cost and low power solution. What's the redriver? Think about the equation image with a simple angle filter and broadband amplifier for 5 seconds. Right, the first stage of the driver should be a CTOE to equalize the loss between the high frequency and low frequency. Equivalently, the CTOE will equalize the swing between the clock in high frequency patterns and long run in low frequency patterns. Then, the equalized but small swing signal must be amplified through a broadband amplifier to drive the 50 ohm law with a higher current such that the output swing would be big enough in a robust operation over the PVT condition. Now, you should realize that the redriver is very simple and should be low cost and low power. But what else benefit over the imitation will you see? Bingo! Signal delay or latency is very little since it's just an analog amplifier delay for its unique amp benefit. On the other hand, what's the redriver's weakness over the imitations? Think about the timing images for 5 seconds. Right, due to accumulation, the redriver can remove the ISI data dependent jitter, but not the random jitter. Therefore, the accumulated jitter from the redriver may degrade the jitter budget, and the end receiver may not have enough I width margin to meet the very low BL rate down to. 1e-12 or 1e-15. What can we do? Think about the timing images for 5 seconds. Correct. From the signal images, we apply the equation to recover the signal integrity. Similarly, we can apply the clock and data recovery CDR to recover the timing and filtering out the low frequency or long-term jitter. Due to the CDR's hunting tracking jitter, we then need another jitter attenuator or jitter cleaner to filter out the high frequency jitter of the CDR output. Then the retimer can retransmit a fresh copy of the eye using a very clean clock, such that the output eye is wide open and clean. Of course, the price of adding the retimer to clean the jitter is the high power and longer latency from the extra complexity in the digital gates, PL, CDR. To be honest, the USB 4 still prefer to add the retimer than the redriver to make the ecosystem work robustly. Other standards prefer the same retimer as well? Of course, from wireline generation to generation, the retimer has been used a lot in Ethernet, Interlagon, Rabbit IO, SATA, SAS, Fiber Channel, and Cetra systems. That the 16 gigabit per second PCI 4 or 32 gigabit per second PCIe 5. The retimer is a must due to the little margin in the system. For the low speed, like the 8 gigabit per second PCIe 3, the redriver is good enough and preferable in the standard. Hopefully, the speed can be a simple rule of thumb for you to choose either a redriver or a retimer, depending on what you need. Here are circuit images of why you need a redriver or a retimer in a service. For example, we need to break the channel into multiple segments if the loss is too high. 
Otherwise, we cannot merge a reasonable PPA and low cost in the design. So we must incorporate the repeater block between each channel segment. Since the channel loss is fairly low, we can just apply a simple redriver contains a CTOE and wideband buffer to drive the next channel. Usually, the redriver can recover the signal integrity good enough at low data rate, roughly 8 gigabit per second, by keeping a low cost, low power, and low latency. But going to a higher data rate up to 16 gigabit per second, the future budget is very tight and the retimer is a must, such that we can retransmit a clean and open eye. Therefore, we must pay a high power and high latency penalty for high data rate eye width margin. In addition to the USB 4, the PCIe 4, PCIe 5, and other high speed protocol already adopt the retimer to ensure a robust link in the ecosystem. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those silky images, I would love to hear your feedback and please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be better from it.